are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint free world. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint free world. No more. We're going to talk about what I call emotional causes today. And as you know, I've been doing a lot of research into emotionality, I guess would be the way I would uh, describe it in a pinch. And that is how are emotions, what is a feeling as opposed to an emotion? How are emotions triggered? How are feelings triggered? How are they extended? How are they maintained? What causes us to feel certain ways, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we talked in the previous jumpstart about what I call low vibing, which David very uh, accurately pointed out is actually high vibration. When you're living in a spirit of high vibration, that's when you feel very chill and very calm. And one of the things that I've discovered is that the more chill, the more calm you can get yourself to be when you're facing situations, the number one is we went through all the reasons as to why yesterday. But the other thing is we begin to discover a feeling of contentment and happiness that is already there. Um, I've shared with you, and if any of you, I know many of you have read any of my books on happiness, and I've written two. In the psychiatric world, the psychological world, they don't like the term happy. It's a little too squishy. They like the term subjective contentment. In other words, subjective. It's up to you. You decide how content you are. How content are you? And when you begin to reduce that vibration that we talked about in the previous jumpstart, it's like turning down static. And all of a sudden, you can begin to feel what is around you. You can begin to feel more content. It's, I feel truly, I feel, I think, which is the more accurate way of putting it, that we all have this level where we can feel content and where we do feel content. And that what blocks it in many cases is our own, what, what we call anxiety. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a habitual vibrational pattern. And this idea that we we all have emotions that are triggered and feelings that are triggered and thoughts trigger feelings and feelings trigger thoughts, it just shows what a symbiotic being we are. We are multiple beings. Uh, we're spiritual, we're physical, we're emotional. I tend to think of, I don't know if you've ever seen a Portuguese man of war on the beach. It's this huge jellyfish. And by that, I mean, it's about as long as your arm. And the sting from what I hear is just horrible and can last for a very, very, the pain lasts for a very, very long time. However, the jellyfish is not really one jellyfish. A Portuguese man of war is several entities coming in together. And we are just like that. We are spiritual. We are physical. We are emotional. Uh, we're, you know, definitely, definitely spiritual. All of this to say that one of the things I've discovered about happiness is that, and remember, I've written two books on happiness. I had somebody ask me yesterday, what, what are your books about? And I said, really about not complaining and about being happy. That's it. Not complaining and about being happy. And in my book, Happy This Year, I gave uh, proven skills, techniques, et cetera, to become a happier person. And in Happy This Year, excuse me, Happy Stories, rather, I interviewed 50 of the happiest people that I knew or had people told me about. And I asked them to tell me what they did or what, what made them different. <sighs> Get what I just said? What made them different? The same is true for both books, tips, tricks, techniques to being happy, advice on being happy. Happiness has a cause. So often we think, what's wrong with me? I'm just not happy. Why? Those people seem to be happy, but why am I not happy? We need to find the things in our life that make us happy 
And we need to make sure that we have those things in our life. It's up to us to trigger happiness inside of ourselves. You get that, right? I actually made a list of this when I was journaling. The first thing I do every morning after I take Teddy out is grab my pen. <laughs> that, that's just, and I've tried other ways of doing my day, meditating first, et cetera. No, I have to, I have to get up and I, I stab things with my pen. And I made a list of the things that make me happy. And it was really kind of interesting. One of the ways to do it is write down the things that make you unhappy and pick the opposite. So for example, I'm single. I don't have any family around me. I moved here right as the pandemic. So I've got a handful of people, a couple of people that I can talk to and go spend time with and hang out with. And so I wrote down that I don't like being alone. I don't. I just don't. I like being around people. I've chosen an interesting field for myself. Now, when I go and speak, which I've got dozens of speeches coming up, and I'm on stage and I'm get off stage and I go to the parties before and after and meet people, I, that I just love. However, being by myself is a drag. So I said, one of the things that I like is to be around people. So I wrote that down. Another thing that I wrote down is I don't like feeling sluggish and without energy. I don't like feeling just bleh. Okay. What makes me not feel sluggish and without energy? exercise. And I've said many, many, many times, every day I give myself permission to hate getting ready for and going to the gym. I still go, but it's like, okay, yes, I get it to a little child and let them have their little internal tantrum. I don't want to go. And I've always got a dozen different reasons. And yet this morning I woke up feeling awesome because I had a 45 minute boxing lesson, which always leaves me just drained and soaked and emotionally just blah, because a lot of what we do is the guy puts on the, my coach puts on his pads and he calls out punches but numerically. All punches are numbered and I just bop it about 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 about. And so this morning I woke up great. So I figured out what I don't want to feel like. And then I said, what makes me not feel that way? We all have things that trigger emotions and feelings with us that we don't like. So it's a good thing to try and diminish those triggers, right? Makes perfect sense. And the thing I'm trying to get across is take a minute and try and figure out what the opposite of that emotion is and do it. It's... It's really funny. I, I've been on this, this personal development path for so long, trying to understand myself, heal myself, become a better person, a happier person, a more contributing into the world. And years ago, I discovered, and I actually wrote about this in a couple of my books, this idea of figure out what you don't want to, what you least want to do in the moment. And chances are, that's what you most need to do. Figure out what you don't want to do in the moment, and chances are that's what you most need to do. In my book, To You Love God, I expressed it as the time to forgive is when you least want to forgive, to forgive yourself and to forgive others. The time to exercise is when you least feel like exercising. So often... and. The reason I find this ironic now is as I'm looking and studying, uh, uh, continuing to study various types of psychiatry and psychology, uh, DBT, dialectical behavior therapy, has this thing called opposite action. Opposite action. What do you think you might do or what would your uh, most neurotic self or your typical self do and literally do the opposite? For me, as I said, I figured out that being around people is, uh, is uh, important to me. And in most cases, when I walk out, I walk out to a group of strangers because where I live is mostly tourists. And so I walk out and there's a group of strangers. And so I remind myself 
a lot of times I'm like, ah, I'd rather just sit here. I can watch the sunset out of my uh, out of my living room, and it's it's better even sometimes than being on the bay. And yet I tell myself, go to where the people are. <laughs> I sound like uh, Samuel L. Jackson Jackson in. Um, Oh, what was the movie? The M. Night Shyamalan movie with Bruce Willis. Anyway, they shattered glass, whatever it was. Anyway, I tell myself, go to where the people are. Go to where the people are. And I find myself feeling, feeling much better. Most people sit around and they say, I'm not happy. I'm just not happy. Why are you not happy? Are things bad? Yes, they often have issues and things like that. Then the question becomes, what are you doing to make you happy? Question mark. Do you know what makes you happy? One of the things I tend to get so busy because he's around me all the time and he follows me everywhere. He's like a little remora attached to me. Teddy is the, my dog. And so a lot of times I'll get busy and won't play with him as much during the day. And one of the things I wrote down that makes me happy, that's an emotional trigger for happiness is playing with Teddy. So I'm doing myself a favor. It's self-care to take a minute or two and play with him. He does this thing now. Uh, he actually has done it for many, many years. When I go to make the bed, well, he has to try and unmake it. While I'm trying to make it, he digs in it and he goes under it and everything like that. And you know how it is. It's just like a child. You want to go, oh, would you please get up? I got to hurry. I got stuff to do. And inside you go, this, I will never have this moment again. And as a result, I am triggered to be happy. So let me ask you, today I'm going to ask you a straight up question. What triggers you to feel happy? What makes you feel happy? Name something. Just tell me something and uh, let us know. And this is your opportunity to click share to continue to spread our positive community. Just click share. Let your friends and family know. Oh, see, we've already got some people who have shared. Willow uh, says, grateful for living in America. Yes, absolutely. We criticize America and then we go abroad and most of us come back going, ooh, glad I'm here. Rescue workers are great at staying calm in chaos. I, I would imagine they must be, Mary. They absolutely must be. I once had a, a friend, or actually a, a trainer, who was a former police officer, and he said the difference between a cop and a regular person is if a cop here gu hears gunfire, they, they're okay running towards it as opposed to away from it. Good morning from Montego Bay, one of my favorite places. Oh, I miss Montego Bay, Courtney. My ex-wife and I actually went there three times in 18 months. Uh, I'm grateful for high energy kids, she says. Grateful for a little hummingbird that just came from a sip of nectar at the feeder in my window. Isn't it just little things like that? Isn't it just little things? And let me make a point. You created that trigger. How did you create the trigger? You put the feeder out there. Those are the kinds of things I'm talking about. We've got to create things <clears throat> in our lives that don't just get us by and raise our status but that also trigger those emotions we want. You ask people, do you want to be happy? Yes, I want to be happy. What do you do to trigger happiness in your life? You get the Scooby-Doo look, right? <laughs> One of the things that I did is I've shared this before. Because of my isolation, I have reached out to old friends and I now talk to, I talk to my buddy Bill every day, talk to my prayer partner, Brian, for an hour every Thursday, talk to my friend Catherine once a week for an hour, talk to my friend Joe once a week for an hour. Who put all that together? Me. And you know what? They always thank me. They're glad too. Oh, let's go back. Mary says, <clears throat> I had a chaotic life. But what I've learned to do is react with calmness. You know, it's funny that you would use those terms, react with calmness. Calmness can be a reaction. Let me say that again. Most of the time we always think of reactive, being reactive as being explosive. No, being calm also works. I had one show up at 6 a.m. this morning. The early bird for sure, says Susan. Susan, how nice. Realizing in this moment that being unprepared is stressful and being really prepared does help my happiness. That's great. Yes, very good point, said uh, Linda. Kathy says, sharing. 
Ah, great jump start. I won't tease you because I know you're walking. Moments are fleeting. Yes, they are. So are emotions. Coffee outdoors. That's a good trigger. Thank you, Cynthia, for being the first one to give us a trigger for happiness for you. Coffee outdoors. For me, watching that sunset, baby. You know, Key Largo sunset. I mean, I go to I go to Key West frequently, and everybody goes to Mallory Square and everything. The thing is there. You've got um, street performers, you've got musicians, which is fun, and you've also got uh, cruise ships blocking the view of the sunset. Here, sunsets over the Everglades. It's gorgeous. Can't wait for you to see it. Morning walk, says Kathy. That's what makes me happy. Music and dancing, says Sherry. You know, sometimes I will put on music and dance by myself. Um, planting seeds, says Willow. Yes. I'm happy to have a game night with my family. Oh, I think that would be so much fun. When I was married, we used to have occasional game nights with the kids and everything in Kansas City. That's one of the things I really miss and I affirm will be back in my life. Make your own joy today. That's the key. You got to give yourself some triggers. That's right, Jennifer. Thank you very much. What brings me happiness is my restored life after ha having survived alcohol abuse. My joys list is endless. And the point I'm trying to, and that's a great thing. You've created a joy list. Most people don't. They don't create a joy list. They don't do exercise. They, they don't have positive people to be around. They don't have a skill or something they enjoy or they're working to develop. I realized that my hobbies have just bounced all over the I was taking flying lessons and I've done you know, yoga for years and weightlifting and everything. And now I'm doing boxing. And the point is I'm always doing something, always trying something. And that makes me happy. So figure out what makes you happy and begin to develop it and bring it and make it a part of your life today. Courtney says, progress makes me happy. And Susan says, shared. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to tell you about, you want to uh, be here tomorrow because let me ask you a question. Do you know what this is? I hope it shows up. It's very dirty. <laughs> the glass is. I'm going to tell you about this tomorrow. And I'm going to tell you about it for the next several days. It's something that launched my life in a whole new direction and has led me to being here with you today. Yeah, seriously? Absolutely. See you tomorrow. We'll start talking about it. Enjoy today. Find some emotional triggers. Bye-bye. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint free no more, no more complaining people, their lives are changing, we're flying high, creating a complaint